Hello, and welcome to another episode of Low End Box TV. In this episode, we're going to walk through using stack scripts on Linode to configure automatically a new VPS. Now, this method I'll show you here um, isn't completely unique to Linode, uh, but they do provide automation. And really, when they talk about stack scripts, what they mean is that you can run a script at node creation time, which is incredibly useful <laughs> because it allows you to save um, having to go in and do a lot of the setup uh, manually. Now, if you're not using Linode, um, you might still just want to take a look at the script we'll use here because you could use that same script uh, on any VPS provider. Just, you know, log in, wget it, or get clone it, or copy paste it, uh, and then execute it, and you'll have the same, the same functionality. But the nice thing about Linode is you can create a whole library of these stack scripts, and then um, depending on what you're doing, you can say, all right, I need a new Linode, which is, Linode just means VPS. Uh, it's just their marketing term. They can say, hey, I need a new VPS for, uh, as a web server, look, I've got a stack script that sets up my web server. Uh, I've got one that sets up the database server or what have you. So it's a real nice way to um, automate some of the work you're doing. I'm logged into the Linode manager here. And what I'm gonna do is just click on stack scripts. And I've got a few already set up, you know, set up CentOS or set up Debian with my preferences, set up Debian with MySQL, uh, et cetera. But I'm gonna create a new stack script. I'm just gonna call this one tutorial script. And for a description, we'll just call it tutorial script. Now I need to associate it with an image, and an image in this sense is what uh, distribution and uh, version we're going to be running. So I'm going to say Debian 10, and the cool thing is we can um, associate with more than one image. So if you know that your script will work fine on Debian 9, Debian 10, etc., you can make all of those kind of eligible. Now, under the script here, this is where I'll actually paste in my script. There we go. Just copying it over from another <laughs> script that I have. Now, let's just walk through this real quickly. I'm not going to go into all the details of how to be a Linux sysadmin, obviously, but we'll kind of just show you how these work. This first block here at the type at the top is really important. This is where you can define variables that allow you to um, uh, get information at setup time. In other words, when the uh, uh, the user you is preparing to provision a Linode VPS, they can answer certain questions and then you'll have access to that information or your script will have access to that information. Now the only one that I've set up is right here. So uh, I'm going to ask for the variable hostname FQDN and that's going to say the ho it's going to be the fully qualified domain name for the new Linode. Um, which we'll use here later. Now, if you notice up here towards the top of this page, you have uh, some other um, options uh, or some other environment variables that are provided to you. So you always get these four environment variables, but you can ask the user to provide other information and then reference those variables in your script. Now, this is a cool trick here at the beginning. What, what this statement here, this exec statement does is it says, run another copy of the shell, run the script in a new copy of the shell, and in that shell, take the, uh, the output and put it into slash root slash stack script dot log. And then of course this two greater than ampersand one means take the standard error and put it the same place you put standard output. So you'll get everything that the script emits will go into that root slash uh, stack script dot log. Now that's helpful because uh, if you have an error in your script or something, this is a great way to debug it. You can see everything the script is doing, all the output of it, and you can quickly figure out the, you know, where the problem might be. And I've also turned on uh, command echoing here. That set dash x means that every statement, every command that the script echoes, uh, sorry, executes, will echo into that script. I'll show you that, that um, or into that log file, sorry. And I'll show you that log file when we're done. Before we continue, I'd like to highlight one of our community advertisers. One of the key challenges facing hosting providers and many other businesses is ensuring email delivery. 
In this era of anti-spam filtering, it's all too common to see your legitimate email banished to a black hole by the major email providers. Fixing that problem is where MailBaby comes in. MailBaby provides simple email delivery and integrates with cPanel, Direct Admin, Exchange, and Plesk. MailBaby is an email smart host that offers outbound filtering. Emails are sent to MailBaby systems and are analyzed for content. Email is then routed through an email zone based on the email content and score of the email or bounce to spam. IP reputation is handled by MailBaby. MailBaby monitors all of their IPs for blacklists and works with email providers through feedback loops and other abuse monitoring to ensure email delivery. If you're not 100% certain that your email will be delivered, visit Mail.Baby to learn more about how MailBaby can help you today. Now, I'm going to, right here, I'm going to tweak the SSHD config by changing it to run on a uh, different port. SSH will now run on port 2222 and then I restart SSH. Obviously a lot of other things you could do here. You could uh, put more commands in if you wanted to. You could uh, use sed to transform some commands. You could wget your own private personal favorite SSHD config um, or you could just cat you know into um, the file or echo into the file, build it from scratch, however you want to do it. In this case, for this tutorial, I'm just changing the port. I'm going to set up a couple creature comforts here in Etsy profile, turn on VI key bindings and alias LL. Um, obviously, many other things you could do there. And, and if you're sharing this VPS with others, maybe you'd want to do those in your own or roots um, dot bash profile. But since I'm going to be the only user, I do it for everyone. Next, I will um, set my locale, uh, generate locales for US UTF-8, and I'll also set the time zone to my preferred time zone. Then I'll do an app get update, app get upgrade, and also do uh, just install a few packages that I find to be useful things I just want to have on all of my VPSs. Um, obviously, you could go a lot further with this. There might be many, many more packages that you want, or you might have a stack script that is, um, you know, set up to create a web server, create a database server, what have you. And obviously you'd have a lot longer list there. Now I'm um, taking that hostname FQDN variable. Remember here at the top, we specified that's uh, one that the user is going to be asked for. And I'll show you how that's done. Uh, and we're going to pop it into both Etsy hostname and Etsy mail name to set those up. And then we set up um, with this hostname dash F command, we set the system hostname. Finally, these commands here are to allow root to trust the SSH key that I want it to trust. Uh, this sets up SSH from scratch. So um, really there's six things, six steps you have to go through. Uh, one is to make sure that the SSH directory exists. Second of all, make sure it's owned by root and it's mode 700, which means that only root can read, write, and execute that directory, not others, not the group. And then we, we write the uh, public part of the SSH key into um, roots about slash root slash dot SSH slash authorized keys, roots authorized key file. Then we have to make sure that file is owned by root and make sure that that file is mode 600. So those six steps, which are probably familiar to you if you spent some time working with SSH keys, uh, are all done here automatically when the, the system is created. Okay, so I've uh, that's my script. Um, now that I'm done with it, all I have to do is say create stack script, and there it is, ready to uh, ready to go. Now, if I want to provision a line node, let's test it out. I'm going to go up here to line nodes. I don't have any at the moment, so I'm going to say create line node. Now, normally here you you know select your image, etc., but instead we're going to go here to stack scripts and I'm going to select the tutorial script and go down here, we'll call this one something clever like server1.lowend.party. Select an image, uh, we'll run this against Debian 10. You notice that this image is listed, or the images listed are only those that we selected as the images for this stack script, right? So you're not gonna get the whole list of Alpine and CentOS and everything. It's only the ones that this stack script uh, runs against. So we'll say Debian 10. Uh, we can put this just in Fremont, that's fine. And then um, 
we'll just make this uh, their smallest one. And uh, let's see here for label, we'll just call this one.lowend.party. Don't need any tags, do need to set the root password. Not going to worry about setting up SSH keys because my script will do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Create Linode. It's being created, there it is, and we'll let that run for a moment, and we'll be back in just a moment to log in. All right, our server has been provisioned, and actually, just logging in, you can see that it's uh, got the host name set correctly there. That was part of the uh, script that we did. Now let's go to this uh, root.stackscript.log. There it is, .log. And you can see here, this is an echo of everything that was in our stack script, right? We had the echo port 222, I'm sorry, 2222. Uh, restart SSH, we did some echoing here. We did locale gen and a um, uh, time zone set. We did the app get update, Let's scroll down here, upgrades, and then uh, we installed some things. And at the very bottom, yep, unpacking, installing, all that kind of stuff, you see that it set up uh, all of our SSH keys. So if I go look at, um, oops, dot SSH, you can see there's my authorized keys. And there's uh, the author, there's the root.ssh directory. Uh, if I were to cat Etsy SSH, SSD config, you can see that we echoed that port 2222 there at the end. Um, what else do we do? Oh, we did the Etsy host name, Etsy mail name, and oh, we did Etsy profile as well. You can see that's there. Yeah, those are the two lines that we added at the end. Well, that's really it for working with stack scripts. Obviously, you have a tremendous amount of flexibility. Virtually everything on a Linux system can be configured using uh, a script or the command line. So therefore, uh, however you want to build your script, um, you can uh, pretty much configure your entire system from, from scratch. And the ability to get different variables at... Um, you know, at the time of provisioning to ask the user questions to say, you know, do you want this to be a, um, uh, what's the host name? You can even ask it questions like, do you want me to install Postgres? Uh, yes or no, and then test that variable and decide what to do. A lot of options, a lot of flexibility there. Um, so that is using stack scripts on Linode. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like more technical content like this, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And we also invite you to visit us at lowendbox.com or lowendtalk.com where we have a lot more technical content like this, uh, views and interviews and opinions from industry leaders, and of course, fantastic hosting deals, uh, second to none in the industry. And finally, some very spirited uh, discussion. Come interact with your peers, save some money, and uh, enjoy your hosting. Until next time, happy hosting.